Hey everybody, today I'm doing something a little different. I am talking about my book collection on my shelf here. I have gotten so many questions over the years about all the different books on my shelf and if I'd ever be willing to give you guys a tour and okay. I've never really understood why because one thing a lot of people are shocked to know about me is that I'm not much of a reader. I don't like to read very much and yet Ironically, I was an English major, and that's actually probably what turned me off to reading. I read so much in college that I just really was like, you know, I'm good. I don't need any more of this for a long, long time. But even as a kid, I always just struggled to get into reading. I was always forced to do it. Whereas there are other kinds of art forms that I just naturally was very interested in. You know, just reading is tough for me. And it's weird, I don't have a short attention span. Not at all, but yet for whatever reason, it's really difficult for me to look at words, just the monotony of words visually for a long period of time. Though I have read a lot, and I will say a lot of the books on my shelf, not all of them, but a lot of them I have read in the past, and there are some that I, I want to get to eventually. So without further ado, this is my bookshelf. All right, here we go. All the stuff along the sides, those are my movies, but we are focusing today on the books. So this is the first shelf of books. So this is more the movie stuff. So the stuff that you might be more interested in. So these are my broadcasting books and my books that I had from like theater class, college classes. Let's see, this book here, I recall someone gave to me. It was an old boyfriend from college. This is Hollywood Babylon, the legend underground classic of Hollywood's darkest and best kept secrets. Yeah, so this has all kinds of stuff like Black Dahlia murders and such, but it's cool. I mean, it's got a lot of dark shit in it because Hollywood's a fucked up place. Back when I started getting obsessed with Orson Welles, I read Rosebud, the story of Orson Welles. Ah yes, cut. This is another book that I think, yeah, there you go. Hollywood murder, accidents, and other tragedies, because I'm very morbid, apparently. Let's see what we got here. Sweeney Todd. Ooh, Oscar Levant. If you know who he is, you get brownie points, and you're my best friend. Oscar Levant is uh, a very, very interesting dude, and uh, I've actually not read this, but I need to. Oh, see, it's good. I'm looking through this. Now I know what I need to look at. This is a very interesting book my mother gave to me, Who the Hell's In It? It's uh, written by Peter Bogdanovich, and each um, essay is about a different actor or whoever that he worked with that is kind of a fascinating figure. So, yeah, it's interesting. I used to be really into Peter Bogdanovich. This is a Frank Sinatra biography, and it's extremely extensive. As you can see, it's quite thick, but I, I did read this and really enjoyed it. Here are my Roger Ebert books, a few of them at least. This is the man that started it all, and I used to collect his books, like, you know, the great movies, and I would read all his essays, and I actually wrote a few of my own, inspired by him. And then, you know, he died, and oh, it's upside down, it looks like, but Roger Ebert, Life Itself. Um, I think my old boss got this for me because she was really into film as well. But yeah, movie freak, lots of movie books, Bob Fosse, of course. And then some random books over here, Romeo and Juliet, West Side Story, the same story, I guess, and Fahrenheit 451. Okay, let's see. And this is just random stuff. Um, I'm not sure. I think these are just the books that were too tall to fit on all the other shelves, because as you can see, this one is slightly wider. Um, but yeah, you know, like I was always really fascinated by different artists and stuff when I was a kid. So my dad used to give me these little like, coffee table art books. And so I was really into Matisse, I guess. Here's a Lord of the Rings book, a guide, because as everyone knows, Lord of the Rings was my obsession as a young person. Ooh, Hitchcock Truffaut. Now this is a book that I need to get to. I admit I haven't read it yet, but um, yeah, on the list, whenever I retire. This book here, I have major sentimental value with, and as you can see, it's really <laughs> falling apart here. When I was a little girl, I didn't know much about painting, but I had this one kind of coffee table book of Renoir, and I learned so much about art and painting and drawing, and it really inspired me as an artist, as a child. And another thing people may not know about me is I'm really obsessed with... Um, Barbie doll antiques. I don't know why, but I am. But this is the best of Barbie. Four decades of the world's favorite doll. 
I have no idea. I just love miniature things. And so I love these little dolls and their little shoes and their little outfits. They're adorable. Yeah, Kingdom Hearts. See, this is how random my bookshelf is. I used to be really into Kingdom Hearts, and this is the guide, because I thought I would need it for the second game, but the second game was bullshit. A monkey could make it through it. Great movies. A hundred years of film. Hmm. Oh, and Lifetime magazines. Everyone knows I'm a big Fred Astaire fan. This is a 1941 Lifetime magazine. And if you look at the date of it, I don't know where it is here, but yeah, it was before Pearl Harbor. Okay, now we're starting to get to some literature. This is Mill on the Floss. This is a book that I really, really loved in college, so I got this special version of it, I remember, for a Christmas. But this book is a really interesting one. It's written by George Eliot, and uh, I don't know, I always found it really interesting. The first half of the book is absolutely brilliantly written, and then it starts to kind of have some issues towards the end. But um yeah, absolutely worth it. And the main character I adored, and not just because her name was Maggie, though we have a lot of similarities if you read it. And of course, Watchmen. This is the thing everyone asks me about in every review, I swear to God. And yes, Watchmen is one of my favorite books. I think it is one of the most brilliant graphic novels and certainly one of the most brilliant stories about superheroes that I have ever read in my life. And I think it's absolutely astounding. And yeah, and here we've got some crime and punishment because I really, really loved Dostoevsky when I was in high school. And oh, okay. Truman Capote, Breakfast at Tiffany's, one of the great novellas. And the movie is so horrendous. It's honestly, it's one of the worst adaptations. It's just so fucking offensive. But if you want to read the real one, here it is. And this uh, really, it's, it's a wonderful, dark story. Got some David Mitchell in there, which I'll have to get to eventually. And oh, Larry McMurtry, The Last Picture Show, a great book and a great film. Really, really good interpretation. The Great Gatsby there. I love that book as well, or did really love it. My Norton Shakespeare anthology and English literature books from being an English major in college. So there's some great stuff in these Norton anthologies. So always a good keepsake. All right, now we're getting into, I don't know what the fuck this category would be, but this book right here, Dirty Dining. If you need a laugh, please, please, please look this up. I'm pretty sure the person who wrote this has never had sex in their fucking life. But it's a bunch of like dirty, in her words, dirty date meals to impress a lady or a man. It's so fucking stupid, but it's a good laugh. Yeah, more film theory and criticism books. That's a shocker. In Cold Blood, a very interesting book and a great film as well. Oh, uh, this is maybe one of the most important books to me, uh, just because it's, you know, it changed my life, really. But after I experienced DMT for the first time, I bought DMT, The Spirit Molecule. And I think a lot of people dig uh, Rick Strassman, a lot of his research that he had done uh, way ahead of his time. A really, really fascinating book and a great thing just to have. It has a lot of good information. I should have probably bought this before I did the drug, but oh well. You live and learn. The Letters of Allen Ginsberg. I am a huge Allen Ginsberg fan. Uh, I love poetry. I may not love uh, reading actual books, but I love poetry. And I love to write poetry. And um, he's just somebody that's really inspired me. When I was in San Francisco, I did all the Ginsberg things. And I may have gotten this in San Francisco. But yeah, you know, poetry is a huge part of my life. And it's something I was pretty good at doing at a certain point. Maybe I still am. I don't know. But yeah, some modern poetry books, a lot of, I had never written a poem in my life until I went into college. And then by the end of it, that was my focus was, was poetry. I am always recommending to the people, if you want to become a screenwriter, this book is absolutely essential. Robert McKee story, <laughs> substance, structure, style, and the principles of screenwriting. You cannot go wrong if you use this book as a guide. Seriously, it gives you everything. It's really boring to read, but it's very straightforward. And yeah, it's just the perfect Bible if you're wanting to, not even just scripts, but writing stories, writing whatever. Just be warned that once you read it, you're going to dissect every film in a certain way. So if you want to keep some of that innocence, don't touch it. But yeah, I got some more books, writing the memoir. There was a point where I was writing a memoir. And The White Album is a very important uh, nonfiction work by Joan Didion. She's one of my favorite writers. And she was somebody who was a great inspiration to me because I write, I used to write in college more nonfiction than actual fiction. The Essential Rumi Poems. This was given to me by somebody very dear. 
And so I cherish this and I read it every once in a while when I need some balance and to be calm. The opposite of loneliness. I'm not really sure what that is. More poetry books. I'm sure my dad has given me. Um, I'm Not That Kind of Girl by Lena Dunham. It's a, it's an interesting read, but you know, I actually think that Girls, the show Girls is a uh, highly underrated and, and really, really smart show. So I bought this at the time, but this was kind of the beginning of her downfall, I feel like. And down here, we just have a bunch of random shit. Those on the other side are all basically like uh, yearbooks and stuff. But here, these are like my old journals from back in the day. This one, I think, this has to be it. Yeah, this has got to be it. This journal I kept when I was younger and I would... For every year that I was alive, like 1995, these are all the movies I saw that year, and I gave them a grade, as you can see, like an A, an A minus, whatever. And I go all the way through to, I don't know what, I'm going to guess like 2007 or something. I started doing star reviews. But yeah, this was my movie journal. This is my checklist for all the AFI top 100 movies back when I was doing that. I think I did that in like when I was 17, so that was fun. But yeah, I'm sure I disagree with myself on half of what I've written in here, but it's still fun to look back at. And the rest of this stuff is just random. Like I've got cookbooks down here because, you know, sometimes I like to cook. And then just more journals. I think these are probably, you know, journals I took notes in when I was in college for film classes and such. But yeah, I keep them because you never know when you can reference it. I sometimes still use them, even for my reviews. So there you have it. That is uh, my bookshelf, and it's a little bit of an insight into my life or my past life, I guess I should say. I hope you enjoyed. It was actually kind of nostalgic for me. But that is the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Here are my Patreon supporters. If you are a Patreon supporter through December 20th, I have discounts for you if you're interested in doing uh, me doing commission portraits for you or anything like that. There are discounts, so you'll need to go to Patreon to look into that. For everybody else, yes, I do portraits, uh, commission portraits, and I sell prints on my website, deepfocuslens.com. You're certainly welcome to peruse, and you know you can email me if you have any questions about any of that. Beyond that, as always, all of my social media is below. You can watch more videos here, and you can subscribe if you'd like. Catch you next time.